Welcome to Common Core Standard 7G1. What I'm going to teach you today is to find the volume and surface area of a 3D object using scale factor. In other words, we're going to uh, create a copy of a 3D object only using scale factors. So not using a net, not building another model, but just using scale factors. So I'm going to show you how that works. Okay. And at the end of this video, you should expect to have very fresh breath, just like Ryan Seacrest. All right, here we go. First of all, what is scale factor? What is scale factor? Well, it's a number that we use to uh, multiply all the measurements or dimensions of a 3D object by to get the new measurements for another object. Okay, for example, if I have a, uh, say I have a little two-dimensional object here. I don't know, piece of paper, piece of wood, something. And it's six by three. Okay, now when I find the area of that, it's 18, right? Because I do six times three. Now if I have a scale factor of two, that means all dimensions get doubled or multiplied by two. And if I asked you, hey, what's the area of that new rectangle going to be? Some people will mistakenly say, oh, it'll be 36, right? Because 18 times two is 36, right? That is wrong. Here's what happens with scale factor. The area of our new shape, and keep in mind, this is not a scale drawing. It's just a uh, little bit bigger. All dimensions, meaning the six, gets multiplied by 2. The 6 is now a 12. The 3 gets multiplied by 2. It is now a 6. So when I find the area, it's actually 72. It's not twice as big. It's four times as big. Okay? So, scale factor. And this also works for uh, 3D objects. Don't worry, I'm going to teach you about what just happened there in a second. It's kind of weird why it didn't double. Let's say we have a 3D object. Let's take these same measurements from up above, the 6 and the 3. And let's say it's uh, 8 centimeters deep. Normally, when you find the volume, you would just go 3 times 6 times 8, which would be 144. Now if we use the same scale factor of 2, what is going to happen? And some people will mistakenly say, oh, it will be 288 now because it's going to double, right, scale factor? Remember, the important thing about scale factor is all dimensions, all the measurements are going to double. So the volume's not going to double, the volume will, will change in a big way. But all the measurements double. So the 3 becomes a 6. The 6 is now a 12. The 8 is now a 16. And as you can imagine, if I take the volume of this new prism here, it's going to be quite large. 576 centimeters squared. Hmm, I need to check my math here. Check your math. What happened? Three times six times eight. Yes, that's 144. I doubled everything. Six times 12 times 16. Did you catch my mistake? Whew, I hope you did. Okay, look at these, look at this. My original volume, 144, my
my scale factor was 2, you think, oh, it's going to double or something? No, it's huge. Let's find out why. Okay. Let me get another piece of paper here. Okay, so when you have scale factor, what happens is I have the uh, area of the original, and we're going to make the area of the copy. The area of the copy equals the area of the original multiplied by the scale factor squared. Let me repeat that. The area of the copy equals the area of the original multiplied by the scale factor squared. Why is that? Well, we're talking about area, and area is two measurements. That's why. Notice how when I doubled the uh, measurements, each measurement of my uh, rectangle up here, from 6 to 12 and from 3 to 6, the overall area did not double, but it was, was a factor of 4. In other words, the area of my copy up here, take the area of my original, which was 18, multiply it by the scale factor squared. That means 18 times 4, that is 72. That's how scale factor affects area. And that's our example up above there. Now for volume, volume's three-dimensional, right? So volume of my copy, this is huge. I'm going to put a box around this. This is such a sweet, it's a short and easy way to get all of this work done without having to make all new measurements, okay? It's the volume of the original multiplied by the scale factor cubed. Why cubed? Because it's volume. Volume has three dimensions or three measurements. Okay. Three measurements or dimensions. So, quite simply, if I use my example from up above, it will explain how it got so large so fast. The volume of the copy, there's my original, was 144, times the scale factor, which was 2, but it's 2 times all three dimensions, right? 2 times 2 times 2 is 8. It's a factor of 8 to get the volume, which of course we learned was 1152 after I fixed my mistake on the calculator. So here are the two big things to remember. Okay? Find the area of the copy and you have a scale factor. You square the scale factor, multiply it by the original. Same with volume, same kind of process. If you have the volume of the original and you have a scale factor, meaning a number you want to multiply all the measurements by, then you uh, cube that scale factor. So in this case, if the scale factor was 2, i got to cube it. 2 times 2 times 2, right? For three measurements. So there's the big deal. Let's do an example problem, okay? Let's get this messy paper out of the way. Here's an example problem. We've got a rectangular prism, okay? And we want to come up with a uh, scale copy. Make a copy with a scale factor of, oh, one half. We're going to make this smaller. Keep this in mind. If the scale factor is greater than one, it's going to get larger. If the scale factor is less than one, meaning a fraction, you're making a small copy. Okay? Just keep that in mind. So, since we have this large object here, picture a cereal box or something, I want to make a small copy scale factor of one-half. Here is how we do that. First, we need to find surface area and volume of the original. Okay, If we don't have that information, we have nothing. So, volume equals 
12 times 18 times 48, which is 10,368 centimeters cubed. So there's the volume of our original. It's important to label everything, keep track of it. Okay. Now we need surface area of the original. Here's the mathematical way of doing it. Just think of every possible combination of these numbers that can be multiplied. We've got 12 times 18. We've got 12 times 48. And we've got 18 times 48. Those are all the combos, right? Let's come up with the answers. Add them together. And then we're going to multiply by 2. Why by 2? Because if we make the net, which I'm going to do in a second, <clears throat> I'm going to do that in just a moment. If you make the net, you understand that we have three sides we can see here, but three parallel and congruent opposite sides. Okay, so to account for those, we have to multiply by 2 giving us a total surface area of 33.12 square centimeters. Okay. The net helps explain that. This is beautiful. It's beautiful. Behold the beauty. If this is the net for our prism up there, then we've got 48 across there. We've got our little section of uh, 18, 12, 12, right? And we work all this out. And here's our 48 times 12. But it's going to be up here also. Here's our uh, 12 times 18, but it's over here too, right? The opposite parallel and congruent side of the box. And then finally, here is our 18 times 48, our 864. That's also twice. So on a rectangular prism, you have two of everything, a total of six faces. Okay, anyway, we have our volume and surface area of our original. Next step is we want to find volume and surface area of the copy. <clears throat> okay, volume of the original. And surface area of the original. I'm just carrying these over from the previous page. Our scale factor, if you recall, the beginning of the problem was one half. And let's think back to uh, our big formulas at the beginning. So for the area of the copy, we take the area of the original times the scale factor squared, because it's area two, right? So area of the original. 3312. The scale factor squared is 1 fourth, right? Because 1 half times 1 half is 1 fourth. Half of a half is 1 fourth. So what are we going to get here? 828 centimeters squared will be the total surface area. Isn't this a sweet shortcut? Surface area of the copy. We took three steps here instead of figuring out all the dimensions, drawing a net, making all those calculations, all that work we did on the previous page to find the original. All we did here was plug the original and the scale factor squared into an equation. Done. Okay, next let's do volume. Volume of the copy is the volume of the original times the scale factor cubed 
because volume is three-dimensional. Let's substitute our numbers in. The volume of our original was 10,368. Our scale factor is one-half, but when we cube that, we get one-eighth. Okay. And that is going to give us 1,296 centimeters cubed volume of the copy. So much easier. So much easier. Okay? That's it. All right, now you're prepared to uh, do all kinds of problems like this. Walk you back through the steps. Oh, better yet, you can just uh, watch the video over again if you want to do that. Anyway, you've just learned how to find the volume and surface area of the copy of a three-dimensional object without doing anything but substitute numbers and make some calculations. I hope you enjoyed that, and I hope that you will get some fresh breath now and enjoy, enjoy a couple of Altoids. Talk to you later.